I mean, it's quite sad, but it's not as sad as Ratcatcher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was a good podcast. Let's, uh, let's move on. Yep. Yeah, we're doing really well. It turns out a lot of people's first films are really, really depressing <laughs> and feature a lot of death and nastiness. Yeah, but it's weird because this... Was... <sighs> With this one, it, I mean, with Tyrannosaur, <laughs> the film that we're discussing, it's it's not 100% all sad like Ratcatcher was. Well, actually, no. Yeah, no, it was very similar to Ratcatcher. Like, the sort of sad thing happens at the beginning, nice bit in the middle, quite a sad, shocking ending, and then... I don't think the ending's that sad. I feel like the end is actually quite... I genuinely found it a little bit uplifting. I think, like, the last five minutes, but the ten minutes before that... <laughs> yeah, no, like, that is nasty. Oh, God. <laughs> so, who did it? Who did what? The, the um, you know, the camera stuff and the... You go there. Oh and... shit! Sorry, when you said because because there is a murder at the end of the film, I thought you were asking me who did. I was like, I think it's quite obvious towards the end. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the directorial debut from Paddy Considine, who we know from uh, Hot Fuzz, from Dead Man's Shoes. I'm just naming the films I've seen him in: uh, The World's End, Dead Man's Shoes, Hot Fuzz. Wait, he was in a Shane Meadows film. He was Shane Meadows, who we've all, already covered this year. He's in all the Shane Meadows films, apart from Small Time. I could not think of the word. I couldn't think of the, <laughs> the, the title. The only that one that we've done. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, he, he does a lot of... He's a big boxing fan, apparently, as well. Uh, and he made a film last year about uh, a boxer called... What was it called? Journeyman, I believe. Oh. Very yeah, cool. This is he's not um he's not directed many. I think it might literally be only these well, this was two. A, this was a short film before he made it a real film. It's yeah. called Dog, Dog Altogether. Altogether. Uh, yeah, it's literally Journeyman, Tyrannosaur and Well to Dog give it its full Altogether. title, Dog Altogether Dead. <laughs> Uh, apparently he directed a video for Coldplay and a video for Arctic Monkeys Ooh, yeah. probably the highlights of his career they were probably much happier I don't than... know he's, he's pretty funny in Hot Fuzz <laughs> that's quite a positive film true uh, apart from all the murdering oh, he, <laughs> he is an uncredited writer on This Is England yes which I still not see one fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to do all of them. Oh, he's in Peaky Blinders for a bit as well. Which yeah. Do you know what I, I figured out what I'm see. actually going to do is I'm going to, like, Clockwork Orange you into watching. <laughs> 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 this is England. Clockwork Orange recently got a, uh, a re-release. It was because it's, it's the 40th? 40th anniversary? Yeah, because I was 30. seeing... 40th. Because I keep seeing on the tube they've got posters up for, like, Kubrick and stuff. And then I was looking at... What was I looking at? Oh, I was looking to see if Captain Marvel was in the cinema because I was kind of like, oh, I kind of want to see it again. But and then I was just like... Uh, <laughs> does this cinema know that this film's really fucking old? <laughs> but um, I didn't know why it was in the cinema. I was like, oh, maybe I'll go see it in the cinema. But I've then, not seen Clockwork Orange, actually. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, is it good? It's really fucking good. Oh, I'm surprised as a Go student on. of the arts yeah. that there is there seem to be many gaps in films that I feel you should have seen. <laughs> it's almost like I've not seen all the films. Yeah, but like... I'll tell you what film I have seen a lot. Attack of the Clones. Well, that's because you buy so many fucking copies. Because <laughs> you're weird. I don't buy them. It's like... The, the book in Finding Drago it just shows up a worthless vagrant gave it to me <laughs> that's, well that's this funny is my last episode of this podcast <laughs> <laughs> that's funny if you've listened to Finding Drago which is an amazing podcast 
Never mind. Um, yes, Tyrannosaur then. Shall we move on to the actual film? Yes. Right, Peter Mullen, who you halfway through text me was like, "Oh shit, it's Yaxley." Well, I mean, to be fair, I text you after I, I was I wasn't even two minutes in. I just went, "I'm a minute and a half in, and there's a dead dog." <laughs> mm, <there's laughs> the a, fuck are you making me watch? I think I sent you a similar text because I watched it slightly before. I watched it. I think like the I think day, like a day before, the day or two something. before, yeah. Uh, what did I say? See, this is a very, like, behind-the-scenes bit. It's just us, like, both watching stuff, just being like, ooh. I sent you a text um, saying, I'm two minutes into Tyrannosaur. This isn't going to be a happy one. (laughs) And I I want rum. I'm just going to see, because I think I said something similar to you. Then I said, I think I also added fuck you to it. Hmm. You literally, it was that. It was um, two minutes in, there's a dead dog, and then a separate message gift was just, fuck you. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then I sent you the My Watch Has Ended gift. <laughs> but I don't but make I continue the rules. watching the film. I don't make the rules, okay? You I pick the films. Just make the rules. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. yes. If you don't make the rules, you just make a list. <laughs> Uh, so yeah Peter Marlin plays Joseph uh, you first see him he's leaving the bookies he's having a fight with someone he basically is just he's got a can of restaurant in his hand he goes oh fuck off and he leaves the place and he kicks his dog to death which is fucking horrible because he kicks it in the ribs and it, his ribs just collapse and it, yeah end up with a dead dog um, he buries the dog and then goes and has a go at some Asian people in the post office to which they respond you really shouldn't fucking do that because you do that we'll A not serve you B call please you know, just fuck off stop doing that so he goes okay sorry sorry I do apologise <laughs> he Leaves, smashes ah, the window throws a brick through the window so. what I like about like that shot of him throwing the is he looks very because like you, he walks out of the shop and you're like oh he's going to do it but then there's like just a few like just a static shot with him leaving from one side walking back looking at it and walks off the other side gets the brick and smashes it <laughs> it's, it's a good I little just, um... I like I like linger I actually I really like lingering shots mm. I, I think I can think of my favourite <laughs> it is where Tom and steps out the window <laughs> but... <laughs> well because it just gives you that like it, it almost reminds you that you're watching something but then also gives you a chance to see the character like process something. Mm. I feel like and it, then it, act. That that technique, it, the way it's employed in Tyrannosaur anyway. It, I think the camera staying still and not cutting away, it almost makes it a more tangible world that he he can move around the frame and he still exists even though he's not in frame and he comes back with a brick so it's like it's almost like okay well the construction of the film has now stopped but he's continuing to carry on his life so it, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's it gives of, you it's more it makes it more like a window yeah than a tracking shot would yeah it, it weirdly it's more involving than not seeing him is more involving than seeing him at that point which is it's a very strange way that that works but it it does yeah and then obviously through that window you see him smash the window (laughs) that's like 16 windows (laughs) yeah it Um, just goes on forever it's just you just go deeper and deeper so he ends up oh he goes and has a fight with some people in the pub and then he hides in a charity shop which is where Hannah works who was played by Olivia Coleman who I was we were talking Lisa and I were talking about her only today because we were watching Fleabag while we were waiting for our dinner and um, I, I, I made the point that I at no point think she's Olivia Coleman I completely believe she is Sophie in Peep Show she's the godmother in Fleabag she's Hannah in Tyrannosaur she's Doris in Hot Fuzz even like yeah she's, she's fucking she is incredible. the most chameleon of actors yeah because I thing just is, like, believe she's that person I try, every time I see her in something and someone's nasty to her mm. it just makes me hate them yeah no, Eddie like, Mars, I like it, when she goes home and it that's when you first realise that she's got an abusive husband is when she's asleep well, on the see, sofa the thing is, he comes I had in this, and pisses on her I had this thing with 
because I thought that her, I assumed that when she was like, oh, you don't know anything about my life, and she went home and was sitting alone, I was like, oh, her husband's dead. Mm. So I went from that to being like, oh, her husband's alive, and then to being like, ah, oh, I wish he was dead. Yeah. Oh, he's, it's, a he's very short, it's a very short amount of time that it takes for you to go, oh, I'm glad this guy's... Why is he not dead? Mm. Wow. It's like... I, it's, that's another, like, just continuous static shot where you're just like... It is, yeah. And you just sort of go, you, you he's can't gun. believe it, can you? You can't believe that someone's doing that to someone else. Yeah. I, I think the bit at the end where she opens her eyes and it's just like, oh... Yeah, that... Oh. It's like she knows she's expected it almost and it's like, oh yeah this has happened again but the thing is Eddie Marzan I think is uh, he's also an incredible actor and I think he's brilliant but fucking hell did I hate him which is good because he's clearly he's done his job then he's made me hate him and that's his his entire thing is he's a character you're not supposed to like so, yeah, it's the same thing with like um, Jack uh, is it Jack Gleason in Game of Thrones? Yeah. Who sort of like got a lot of hate for Joffrey, and it's like, well, <laughs> you've done it right. Then, then you're only doing it right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, and then it, it, the the rest of them, it becomes like this, almost how they uh, this friendship between Joseph and Hannah, and how actually their worlds, while appearing very different, are fairly similar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in some ways, well, his anyway. Wo- his world, like him in his world, seems quite morose and like grumpy. But then you add her to his world, then everything just seems better mm. for both of them because no one's pissing on her. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, her husband, um, for want of a better name, cunt. Um, just takes it to like just does that thing that I got annoyed at Dr. Foster for doing where they assume that something <laughs> is happening and they ju- he just goes you're having an affair and then he is rather violent yeah he so, the, so what he, the first, the he, first says, is he, just, he hits her in the face which is like made me go don't hit Olivia Coleman. I will come and find you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, obviously, it it escalates from there. Mm. When he comes to the charity shop and she's with Joseph, Joseph, and she's just like, "Oh no, nothing happened." Like I was just—he literally just. So you've been going to some f- soup fittings recently. <laughs> if Lisa turned up and a woman was helping you put a tie on. Would she go and just be like, you're clearly having an affair? <laughs> no, she'd just straight up cut the woman's face. See, that's the sort of reaction <laughs> that I would expect. <laughs> no, obviously not. Obviously yeah. not. But it's, it clearly it just shows, again, how weak of a person he is, that he's that insecure. That clearly yeah. this woman, who is, is nothing but delightful... And all she wants is to be a mum, which we don't know at this point, but she does go on to explain like how, you know. Well, in the first meeting, oh, she, just, first, she yeah. says she can't have kids. And he says can't or won't. She doesn't reply. Yeah. So, yeah, but, yeah, so it, it just it speaks to, again, of, of how shit of a person is. And the worst part, well, not the worst part, but one of the worst things that I think he does... Is when he is. This is um, James, uh, Hannah's husband. Is when he. You can call him. Wait, you can call him. Cal, it's fine. <laughs> is when he comes to apologise for hitting her, and she's nothing but forgiving. And he said, "Oh, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm so sorry." And it's like, this is just bollocks because this is just going to happen again. Do you know, I bet it's just deep down, tiny penis. Like, that's, that's the accusation that she throws at him just before he rapes her. That, that's what she says she, while she's drunkenly just saying, oh, fuck you, yeah, I fucking hate yeah, Call she, that cock. Olivia, <laughs> Olivia Coleman does um, angry drunk acting better than anyone I've ever seen because there's a, a couple of scenes in um, Peep Show where she, where she plays Sophie where she's angry drunk and it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing is, 
that I found weird is it's a very it's a film that deals with very like difficult topics to put across in entertainment essentially but then there's so much like like it's very dark and then like just everyone just being happy <laughs> and showing the way the fact that like he like James hides his insecurities with violence and a facade to the world but then Joseph doesn't do that so much but she, like both of them as a couple like Hannah and James just pretend to be fine mm. until like essentially until the doors close and no one can see them yeah which I think that maybe where the films that is most powerful when it's saying because I think it's like something you said then is like oh it's, it's a strange thing to discuss in entertainment and I'm I think it, it's only a good thing that it's in the form of a film because well I mean hopefully the point of this film being made is that someone somewhere has watched it and realised oh shit I'm in a similar situation I don't have to be in this situation I'm, I'm going to do something about it where previously you might not have thought that would be a, a viable route is getting yourself out of something but hopefully the fact that it's you know it yeah. isn't a film it's something that you can go online and just you know Amazon Prime click there we go you think oh yeah I like Olivia Coleman I like Paddy Onstone I'll watch this and suddenly you're like oh shit this is my situation now I can do something about it which you'd like to think happens because anyone living like that you just feel horrifically sorry for yeah I mean to be fair did you manage to place the saying of this anywhere because I spent a lot of the film trying to work out where they were <laughs> uh, no, because it never I, uh, it never says they never explicitly say tell because I initially started watching it I was like ooh Glasgow because <laughs> he's like Joseph's a bit Scottish and I was like oh another sad film set in Scotland imagine my surprise um I, well I figured it was probably somewhere in the north or like I think Midlands. yeah when I started hearing like because you got some regional accents from up yeah, that you way got some I think Manchester was the one that I sort of went oh maybe it's there yeah like a suburb of you know Manchester or even you know Birmingham or Coventry or something even I don't know but yeah I mean it's fair it doesn't matter I was just wondering if you've no, it's, done it's, any better than but me I, <laughs> but I think that might be deliberate because it, it makes it if you say it's, if you don't give it any specificity about where it's set it means it could be in the uh, in the minds of its audience set round the wherever corner wherever you want yeah, yeah. um so yeah so it, we de- you then find out that Joseph is he has these anger issues because well at least in part um he had a his wife died um five years previous uh, due to her diabetes and he he says he tells Anna about how he used to call her Tyrannosaur because she was a, a larger lady and when she walked about the house it was like the bit in Jurassic Park where the, the yeah. glass of water ripples <laughs> like, I, 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 the thing is I, like as much as he's a dick for that I love the scene where he's explaining it yeah because yeah, it just it seems is so innocent yeah. as well yeah um and, and then, then not, fucking not hell. long after that <laughs> Jesus Christ. I did not see this cut. Did you see this coming at all? The thing, I thought it was going to happen when... But you think it's going to be like Joseph. Hannah, that Hannah's being raped. And like, there's a knife there. Oh, there is a pull. knife, isn't there? Yeah. He, yeah. He, he... So I was like, oh, she's going to fucking stab him. But then it cuts away and I was like, oh, maybe she won't. But then when she goes back to like get everything and then when they go back together like Joseph and Hannah go to get her stuff she then refuses she, to go she in she then runs away and I was like oh maybe she did really that didn't even occur to me I was just like oh no because she, she's kept saying oh it's too soon making a big thing about oh, we are not going in there because I think that's her realising isn't it saying oh shit no you can't go in there you can't see what I've done oops she dropped coin yeah see that's the thing I sort of went oh I think I think she's done it 
But then I, I second guessed myself because I was like, oh, maybe, maybe she doesn't like just doesn't want to. Because like at that point, because it's not explicit that she has stabbed the fuck out of her husband. No. That you sort of. I think even like Joseph does, sort of doesn't go. He goes, oh well, <laughs> nothing's probably wrong there. Apart from the husband being a cunt. Hmm. I just, I just didn't see it come. But then, so when, then Joseph goes back to get her some clothes and stuff. Goes upstairs. And he's, it takes its time, doesn't it? He's wandering around the house, mm. and you're just thinking, oh shit, he's going to be in there. He's going to attack him or something. And he opens the door, and there he is, sat up against the door, the cupboard door, and he's got blood pouring out of his neck. And I, and there's flies around him, so that just it shows you that he's been there a while. So my first initial thought was, oh, he's killed himself. And then I, when he he went back to see Hannah, he goes, "Oh shit, you're fucked." I was yeah. like, "Oh shit, she did it." <laughs> and uh, the, and then she has, the, the, I I don't oh fucking hell, uh, Olivia Colman's performance in this when she has the breakdown and just says, "You know, all I wanted was to be a mum and he oh, I, I he think... break me and he put glass inside me." I was like, "Oh yeah. my." God, he fucking deserves it. It was the build-up to that where she was just like, "Oh, what was he there?" And did I was he, like, "What?" Did, she even says, "What did he say?" Or did he yeah, say and anything? I was just like, oh, something? did does she not know? And then she breaks down. And she's like, "Yeah, well, he deserved it," which he did. Oh, really? Just the fresh, he put glass. All I wanted was to be a mother, and he put glass inside me. I was like, "Oh my god." Yeah, stab the cunt. That's fine. Yeah. And, and then, then it just sort of cuts to the, like, year later bit, where he's writing gets, a letter to her. It gets really, really dark again. Like, it's already he dark. Only, and then he, he gets... only kills another dog. This time he does it intentionally, though, with a machete. Oh, this dog, it mauls this boy that he's, he's friendly with. That little kid, he is fucking brilliant. All the way through, he's really funny. Like, the way he goes... Oh, you're right, Pete. How you doing, son? It's not, yeah. He's about fifty years older than him. And he's just a nice guy, and he's like, and especially when he's like telling Joseph not to knock down the shed that his dog lived in. So he's like, oh yeah, but they're memories, and I was just like, this kid understands. Yeah, something bad's gonna happen to him. <laughs> But, and so he, he goes and he kills this dog and the shot of him sat in his chair with the dog's head in his lap like fucking go on then with the guy who's been for the whole film just like fucking come on then I've got my dog yeah to then just be like that's my dog <laughs> and it's just like you kind of deserve it mate don't train dogs to bite people yeah I, I, mean, I feel it's sorry not even, for the dog. It's not even, yeah, the dog wasn't even trained to do it. He was he, just he goes mistreated. To, he previously goes to kill the dog with the sledgehammer, and he's talking to the dog, isn't he? The Joseph. Yeah, it's not he your says, fault. It's not your fault, buddy. Come on, it's not your fault. And he's like, but I'm going to put this sledgehammer through your face. Yeah, and that's, so the thing, then, that's he references that bit in the letter where he's like, "I should have done something sooner." Yeah. I think he's actually not talking about like being like, "Hello, police." He's talking about murdering the dog. <laughs> If maybe not, the guy attached the guy. but my favourite bit about that scene is you when he's because there's the shot of him sat in the chair and then a shot from his point of view with the guy walking towards him that switches focus between the cunt walking towards him and the mum who kind of doesn't look sad about it yeah I think she's torn because she's like oh yeah no because this dog's just bitten my son and this guy's a dick but then also it's like Ah, uh, yeah, he has just killed my boyfriend's dog. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it comes full circle. It starts with a dog killing, ends with a dog killing. It's almost like a, a really low budget John Wick. Yeah. <laughs> Without the con- anyway. Uh, yeah, and then and Joseph goes and visits Hannah in prison. Yeah. And that's the end of the film. I also and like I like the bit where he just sort of goes, <laughs> I didn't come into your shop randomly. Like, I see you were the only one of only two people around here who smiled at me. Mm. And so I just wanted to know you. And I was like, that's really nice and a bit creepy. What would you I, expect I, from a Death Eater, though? I think it's um, I think it's brilliant. 
it's, I, I, it's, it's a tough. dark film with like a. It, it's tough, but I loved it. Yeah, that's it. As soon as I start, I started watching it, I was like, a couple minutes in, I was like, oh, what the fuck have you got me watching? There's a dead dog. This man's just carrying it home. Why is no one stopping him? <laughs> and then, as I watched it, and was like, oh, like once I realised it was Yaxley, I was like, oh, I like this film. <laughs> and then. Uh, his best mate's daughter was in Shameless as well and she was one of my favourite characters in Shameless I was like fucking you as well what are you doing here and then she like doesn't say anything like, barely says anything until the funeral I was like you haven't done much since Shameless have you <laughs> <laughs> out of practice with this whole talking thing but yeah no it was a really good film have you seen the amount of awards that it won yeah it's got quite a few also I've just looked and seen how much it lost at the box office I know it's, it's a shame I don't like, understand it's literally half the budget almost but well because you know people don't necessarily it's a, it'll probably have been on a, a, a quite a limited release um, and it's not one that and the word of mouth is going to be well I took the kids to see a nice dinosaur film <laughs> <laughs> and this cunt murdered a dog <laughs> well I mean I, it's got to be an 18 right it's got to be an 18 well, I don't know. I actually think it might be a prequel to Land Before Time. <laughs> it's a sequel to Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, I love that the... Like, that... It's one of those films that makes... Like, I was like... Sat there for ages. Like, Why the fuck is it called Tyrannosaur? And then he's like... It was a nickname for my wife. And I was like... Oh. That's cool. That's like a good name drop in a film. Not like Suicide Squad where he's like, well, I guess we're some sort of Suicide Squad then. It's like, oh, yeah. Really <laughs> shoehorning that in, aren't you? <laughs> it, um, it, it, it sort of fits thematically about the... Because if you look at the poster of Tyrannosaur, it's like you've got the, um, the picture of the house and the trees on, and there's a, a chat, you know, clearly it's Joseph on, on top of the ground and then underground with all the roots of the trees. There's a massive... Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton, and I think that's obviously Soon symbolic to be of like by two dogs. <laughs> it's symbolic of like stuff being hidden from sight and hidden away from, you know, it's almost similar to American Beauty. It's like people put on this front, and what happens behind closed doors and in their houses and stuff is completely different to the, what you see on the outside. So Hannah being so pure and lovely when she you know and then when she gets home husband pisses on her and rapes her and stuff so is it yeah. also a metaphor for the fact that you can forget about the past but it's still there yeah just I, that's another mine reason was much it. shorter <laughs> um also could just be you know dinosaurs uh, that's another reading of it yeah just trying to get kids into the cinema and being like ah, I'm gonna fuck these kids up <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh sorry oh I was caught by a sudden wave of time yeah um, I absolutely loved it I thought it was absolutely brilliant but very very tough watching yeah like it's not a film that you can go into in a bad like if you're already in a shit mood don't yeah. watch this film yeah <laughs> if you're um, in if you're in a good place mentally, <laughs> yeah, you're if, happy, well, a, a and, resilient. You want, and you want to be sad. <laughs> yeah, if, if it's a resilient place. Because I have been thinking about it like ever since I watched it. Oh, I wonder if I'll ever watch it again. Because, you know, there are some films where you're like, I'm glad I've seen it. I'll never watch that again because it's so tough. Oh, are you talking Ratcatcher? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, if, I like, I'm glad that I've seen the film. I'm not even sure I'm, I'm at that point with it. <laughs> and I'm, I jokingly recommend it to people. <laughs> <laughs> Like my sister, because <laughs> you were oh, here when she sent the, me. Yeah, what was the? She um, sent me. I, I don't know. I don't know if she actually watched it. Because she just sent me a text going like, "Oh, give me a film to watch." Ratcatcher. <laughs> Didn't say anything else. Which is like, oh, it's uh, lovable anthropomorphic romp. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a nice story about kids being dead. <laughs> um, I would quite like to watch Journeyman having now seen what Paddy Gonson can do and I've heard that Journeyman is fantastic and I'd very much like to watch that now but yeah I, I'm again, curious to see more of his, his films like the ones that he directs not the ones that he's in because I've seen well it's literally it's only Journeyman and the short film that that Tyrannosaurus was based on so he's, I think he's probably done the fewest films on our list of people with 
pubs that we're um, discussing well, for that's, this series. That's a good thing. There's um. Actually, I think Drew Barrymore may have only directed one. No, do you know? I think Michael Bay's only done one. No, he's done loads. <laughs> I mean, it's um, the same film over and over again, but. <laughs> Oh, that's why I'm getting confused. I really don't like Michael Bay's films. <laughs> but I thought, well, in the interest of balance, we should have him on, so that'll be, like, later in the year. Well, and instead, Taika Waititi's not made the cut. Oh, fuck, yeah, we should have had him. Well, he's a, he's a good first episode for next year. Hmm. Now, if we do another series of this... You never know. I mean, to be fair, I think we're more likely to run out of directors than we are to run out of TV shows. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I would. I'd, I think, yeah, like we said, if you're in a resilient, resilient state of mind, and well, if you want to watch a masterclass in in acting and performance, you've got Peter Mullen, Olivia Colman, and Eddie Marzan, and that's pretty much the cream of British acting. Yeah, and a lot of, as it turns out, our favourite type of shot, static. Yeah. <laughs> so we like... what well, our ideal film then would be uh, an unreliable narrator and a camera that never moves. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I, I would genuinely love that. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I mean, there must be one that I'm must Googling exist. unreliable narrator and static camera, and I'm seeing what comes up. Um, Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh, I've got an idea. What we're going to do is make a film. Yeah, go on. But the camera doesn't move. Yep. And we just lie to the people watching. <laughs> it's all bollock. <laughs> like, yeah, just, put, just place a camera and just film, like, someone's day. Like, in, like, one... Basically... Just leave the camera want, in a room. Basically, what I want is him and her, but with a static camera. Like, the static <laughs> camera in the hall, and you can just hear everything, but you don't always see them. <coughs> I think it's already been done. Though. <laughs> um, right, I think that's it for Ty Rano sort. Um, yeah. The next episode of co-directors is uh, Andrew Arnold. Uh, we're going to be looking at Red Road, which is a film that I've heard a lot about. Um, I can't think of what else Andrew Arnold's done. Uh, Let me have a quick... Just object. Uh, it's all about. I know it's all. Ah, that's it. Yeah, she did a uh, fish tank, which is the first film of hers I saw. Um, with yeah, fish tank with Michael Fassbender and featured. I can't remember the actress's name, but she was cast because um, either Andrew Arnold or the casting director was on a train platform, and this girl was having an argument down the phone with her boyfriend, and they were so impressed by what they they were seeing. That they just cast her on the spot, and just offered her a job, saying, "Do you want to be in this film, playing basically this character?" And yeah, Fish Tank's great. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, Red Road. Oh, cool! It's set in Scotland. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, set in Glasgow, apparently. Fuck's <laughs> sake! It sounds a bit like a cross between Train Spying, I guess, because Scotland. And the following. <laughs> so, it, ah. it sounds really interesting, actually. I'm really interested to see that. Good, good, good. And the next co pilots you're going to hear is. Some in between us. Yes. Which, actually, we Which we're actually just we're about, about to record, record now. Right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, just listening. Andrew Arnold, next episode, Red Road. Go watch Tyrannosaur. It's fucking great, but it's tough as shit. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> Smashing goodbye. <laughs>